Good evening, friends, or good afternoon, actually. Good afternoon, friends. Uh, I'm Vineet, uh, and you're watching me live on Facebook and YouTube. And today we are actually going to go through water photography session, where I will be explaining you how uh, we do water drop photography. I mean, the name sounds uh, very simple, and the whole thing is very simple, where uh, we can have water drops falling on a liquid, and they form different shapes and sizes. We can add colors to it and make it more interesting. So it's a very straightforward concept, but there's a lot of variation that we can create uh, through some techniques that I'm going to talk about today. Um, we will talk. We will go through uh, different uh, things like what skills are required uh, to do water drop photography. We will also talk about what techniques we use when we do water drop photography. We also talk about the equipments that we use in water drop photography. When we talk about equipment, there are two sides actually. Um, uh, one is the machine that we use for water drop, and the second is the camera and camera lens. So we will talk about that as well, and then we will also talk about the camera settings itself, what sort of camera settings we are going to use to create wood drop photography. So let's start with the skills. Um, in terms of the skills, I mean, if you are, if you have a DSLR that allows you to have manual camera settings, uh, you're not going to get it with auto, forget about it. If you are still on auto, then it's not going to work. If you need to switch from auto to manual mode and full manual mode. And when we talk about manual mode, there are actually quite a few um, things that you need to work on, and I will talk about them in a minute. Apart from that, I, you don't necessarily need any other skills. As long as you can set your camera in manual mode, you are good to go. So we will talk about uh, more in detail about the settings and all that, but this is the skill that you need. Then uh, the techniques that we use when we are actually taking these pictures. In terms of techniques, it's so wide that people, I mean, if you do a Google search with water drop photography, um, and you will find millions of images. People spend days creating these pictures. Uh, I personally have not really spent that much time in creating these pictures, but yes, if I, if I, if I'm passionate about it, I can just sit next to my table and, and keep creating these pictures. And there are techniques that we use uh, to create these pictures. Now, before you understand how these pictures are created, you need to understand what goes on when a drop hits the water surface, what happens there. With our eyes, we don't see that uh, actual, what is happening in there. So what I want you to do is to watch a very short video which explains how the drop hits the water and then what happens uh, when the second drop uh, is, is hitting the water. So there is a full sequence. And uh, if you see that video, you would understand exactly what goes on when the water drop hits the water surface. So if we can play uh, the very first video, which is the slow motion uh, video, you could just play that for me. Hi, Suraj. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you are there. I can see you are there. Thank you very much. And anybody else who has joined, if you can just drop a message so I know who is watching. So, right. So, that's how uh, the water drop actually hits the water and what happens. So, first step is it makes a crown. So as soon as the first drop hits, it makes a crown. And then the column or spike is formed. And then the second drop hits the first one, the column itself, and it makes an umbrella. So this is the sequence. You may not have ever seen that uh, with your eyes, but when you see it in slow motion, you can understand exactly what's going on. 
and we want to capture all these sequence. We just want to capture maybe just the crown. We want to capture uh, the column or the spike, or maybe we want to capture the umbrella. Now people hit three drops, and then they make more things. It's, it's endless, actually. The whole thing is endless. People keep spending hours and hours and hours on this, and they keep creating beautiful pictures. I actually learned this technique from a gentleman called Joe Dyer. Uh, he is uh, the one who manufactures actually, these machines. And uh, he, I invited him to this studio where we, are, where, are, where we are shooting today in 2013. Precisely, I think that was 9th of April 2013. And we did a live demonstration of his machine on that day. And I already purchased, before I invited him, I already purchased the machine just to practice a bit. And I loved it. It's, it's such a thing that you sit back and watch the drama happening. So he, he, he will, he, I would say he is my teacher on this. Of course, YouTube and other resources are also there. But he, he actually gave me an idea how this is actually done. Um, so if you want to check more uh, pictures on water uh, drop photography, do a search with Joseph Dyer or Joe, J-O-E, Joe, Dyer, D-Y-E-R, uh, water drop photography, and you will find millions of pictures, and they are simply outstanding. I have not been actually using this machine that much. I think today would be the fourth or fifth time in the last 10 years I've used this machine. Uh, apart from that, it stays in the storeroom, sitting there doing nothing. But it's an interesting thing. Right, so now next thing we want to talk about is the, the equipment that we use when we are doing uh, this kind of photography. Now equipment has got two sides basically. One side is the camera side and the other side is the machine side. If you see in this screen here in the, on, on the screen, we have a camera on this side and then there's a machine there, a little flask and then there's a nozzle and there's a stand so this, these are the two sides that we have. Let me talk uh, first about the, the machine, and then we will. when I tell you, you will, I will be showing you a short video as well. The machine uh, itself is actually made by Splash Art um, Water Drop. Uh, it's called Splash Art Water Drop Photography Kit. That's how it, it is sold. Uh, designed by Joe uh, Dyer. And uh, this has got a little flask at the top. And then it has got a nozzle, and then it's got some controls, and it controls the whole thing. I'll show you a video on that. Let's let's quickly watch the video actually, um, number three, video number three, and, and then you can uh, have a look at that. We'll come back and discuss that further. Right here is the machine that we use uh, to create amazing water drop photography pictures. And it's not just water, it could be any other liquid as well, like milk or whatever liquid you can think of. Um, that's the machine. So that has got a little jar at the top. Then it's connected to a little device here, which is connected to a controller. That's the controller here. And uh, that's the nozzle where the water drops are likely to come out. If I press the button, you will see some water coming up. There you go. That's the water coming up. And then on this little controller we've got four buttons uh, starting from the move first button is controlling the size of the first drop so that one is for the size for the first drop then the second one is for the gap between the two drops uh, in time that's the gap between the two drops and the third one is for the size of the second drop so you can control the size of the second drop how big or small the second drop is going to be and the fourth and final button is for the camera shutter delay after how long from the time that the drops are released to the camera clicks that is something you is controlled by uh, button number four and then there is a press button here small press button when i press it the green light will come on there you go and the water or liquid is released through the nozzle i'll do it again so you can see so i press that button and the water is released and it's drop is releasing two drops as we have set it up and that you catch in a container at the bottom so this is how this machine works uh, the machine is from a company called splash art and they sell it as a splash art water drop photography kit 
and it comes with a stand and controller and, and a sync cable. Um, so what happens, one of these cables coming out from this machine goes into your camera. So that's, that's coming out from the machine and that goes into the camera. There it is. So that's going into the camera. So when I press this button, the camera automatically clicks for me after a certain delay. So assuming that the drop travels from here to here, that could be certain microseconds and that's when the camera clicks by itself. So that's how it is used. One, one of these is actually connected to the power main supply. The middle one is connected to the, to the actual um, machine. And third one is connected to the camera. So these are three cables there. So it's, it's very straightforward. Only only uh, drawback on this machine is that there's no no numbers on these dials, and I believe they don't want to put any numbers uh, for a reason. I suppose because it's all about experimenting. There's no hard and fast rule that uh, go for number four or number five on the dial and it will give you a nice drop. But if there were some numbers, that would give me an indication that if I'm using water, then at number four it gives me a better picture or number five or whatever number it could be so i wish there were some numbers or at least an indication of which button is for what job because otherwise i have to remember them and it's, it, it gets confusing when you're dealing with four buttons at the same time it gets confusing so i wish uh, there were some uh, display messages on these buttons so rest and it's available on ebay uh, uh, with the, with the, with the if you do a search with a splash art water drop photography kit and you will see this is a price of £179 uh, plus a delivery of £50 and the gentleman who sells it, his name is Joe Dyer, uh, he's a wonderful chap. I, I have invited him uh, to my studio in 2013 and he, he did a live demonstration of how this thing works and we had an amazing time with him. He was here for about two, three hours. So yeah, that's what it is. If I show you his listing on eBay, that's his listing on eBay. So if I show you pictures, that's, that's how the pictures are. Maybe there might be more pictures. Oh, look at that. So these are some of his pictures there. And that's all with this machine. There you go. So that's his listing, 179 quid. Uh, plus eight pound fifty delivery. So that's the machine. Right. So that was about the machine that is used to create water drop uh, photography. And then we talk about the camera side of it. Uh, on the camera side, uh, we can use any camera that allows you to uh, be in the manual mode, where you can control your settings, including uh, your white balance, your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture. And, and, and then the lens, you have to use a lens that can go really close to the water drop. An ideal lens would be a macro lens. The one I'm using is an Nikon uh, 105, 105mm 2.8 lens, which is, I think, one of the best uh, macro lens. And Nikon calls it mi micro lens, but it's, it's a macro lens. So that's, that's the lens which I'm using, and it's an amazing uh, sharp lens. Um, now we come to the settings, camera settings, what sort of settings we are going to use. Uh, we, we will be using a lower ISO, anything from 100, maybe 200, maybe 300, depending on how much light uh, we have. And uh, we choose ISO according to the amount of light. We can go up to 400, not a big deal. I mean, these latest cameras, they are wonderful to deal with. Uh, even higher ISO up to 800, there's no noise whatsoever. So you don't be afraid if you have to pump up the ISO a bit higher. So, but I will say start from 100 ISO. The second thing that we talk about is the white balance. Now, we're not shooting people here. So we, we are not worried about their skin tone and color of the person. We are shooting water drops. And we are going to add colors to it, sometimes yellow, blue, red, whatever color. So when we are using colors already, it doesn't really matter which white balance we use. And if you are shooting in raw, it will give you 
full control afterwards to change the white balance if you're not happy with the white balance in the first place. So about the white balance, you can leave it on auto, although you're using speed lights or flashes. So you can leave uh, your white balance on flash if you want to. But even auto will do the same job, I, I would imagine. So, and the third third thing is the shutter speed. Now, this is this is quite complex to understand and very important to understand what shutter speed has got to do with this photography. Now, some people will will assume that you need to shoot on a very fast shutter speed to get the sharpness. This is this is a common misconception where people will think, oh, I need to have a very fast shutter speed so I can freeze the moment. It's a misconception. You are actually freezing the moment with the light, not with the shutter speed. Let me explain that. So when we actually click uh, the shutter, what happens is speed light or the flash will fire. Now this flash, the amount of light that we throw on the water drop is actually capturing your picture Shutter speed could be even slower or faster. It will not make any difference whatsoever. Um, if, if we just try to ignore water drop photography, then we are actually using a flash in photography. We have to have a sync speed on our camera that allows the flash to fill the frame with the equal amount of light. So every camera has got its own sync speed which is generally anything between 1 upon 125th of a second to 1 upon 300 or 320 of a second. That's, that's in between, it lies in between this, this figure. Now, uh, Nikon's, they, they are sync on upon, uh, roughly about 1 upon 250th of a second. So if uh, I'm using a Nikon, then I probably can get away by having 1 upon 200, 1 upon 250, 1 upon 320, 1 upon 125 it will not make any difference whatsoever, whichever reading you choose for shutter speed. So does it make a sense? I mean, if it, if it makes sense, then you can, you can um, tell me in comments. If it doesn't make sense, I will go through it again. The next thing that we talk about is the aperture. Now this aperture itself is actually, uh, you are controlling the depth of field by having a wider aperture or a narrow aperture. Now, the drop is a very small thing, but when it gets to an umbrella, it gets a little wider. And when it gets wider, we want the, the front of the umbrella as well as the back of the umbrella in focus. And to have both ends in focus, we want to have slightly narrow aperture. Now, you're not going to have 2.8 and 1.4 aperture because your camera is first, first problem is the camera is very close to the water drop. So if you are going to have your f-stop as 1.4 or 2.8, then you are only going to have either the front of the cam uh, of the picture in focus or the back of the picture in focus. So you're going to have very shallow depth of field. You want your depth of field to be much wider. And the way you can achieve it by having narrow aperture, which is anything from 8 to 16. So it depends on the amount of light. You can have eight or 11 or 16, whatever you, you comfortable with. I probably will be shooting from eight and then move a backward, backward forward a bit. See how it goes, yeah. So that's the shutter speed, uh, we, we understand. And then we come to the main part, which is the flashlights. How and which, which speed lights we are going to use. I'm using actually these Godox. I'll show you what which ones I'm using. I'm using Godox AD200. That's the one I'm using, Godox AD200. I'm using two of them, but I will start with first one only, and then I will add a second one on top. And I will be using on the lowest power. When I say lowest power, uh, you need to understand why lowest power. Uh, the lowest power on these Godox is 1 upon 128, which is, is power. How much power maximum it has? 1 upon 1 is full power. 1 upon 128 is the lowest power this flash can fire with. So I will be keeping it on the lowest. And why do I keep it on the lowest? The reason why I want to keep it on the lowest because when the flash fires, the strength of this flash is actually the duration. So if you have on the lowest power, 
That means the flesh is firing for the shortest duration. If the flesh is firing with more strength, is firing for longer duration. And the longer the duration is, you are likely to lose the sharpness of the top. So we are trying to achieve the sharpness by firing the flesh for the shortest duration. If it's very short, click and you get the sharpness. That's the whole idea. So I will be firing the flesh with one upon 128 of its power, which is the lowest on the Godox AD200. And I'm firing it with the remote trigger, which is here, which is the trigger uh, that comes with the flesh. So this, I can control the power of the flesh as well. And I can just click and that will fire. So literally, uh, this is doing all the job. Now let's put everything together, right? Let's put everything together. So we have that machine, uh, this uh, water uh, dropping system, if I can call it splash art water drop photography machine, which has got some liquid at the top here. I've got a nozzle here, and I've got some colored water underneath. Now, all I have to do is to use this controller and press that button, and that will click the picture for me. Now, before I click that picture, I want you to uh, understand how am I showing you these pictures. Um, I have got these camera is connected to my laptop in Lightroom. So basically, all the pictures, as I click, goes into the Lightroom. And Lightroom screen is being shared on the screen. Can we possibly share the screen? Um, yeah, there you go. So I've just shared the screen. This is one of the pictures which I took earlier. Now, if I take a picture just to start with, I will switch off the flash so you can see it's going to be completely dark. I'll turn the flash off and I'll take a picture. So I will take a picture now and see what happens. One, two, three. So the picture has been clicked. And at some point, I should see a. Uh, yeah, Let me bring the picture up first. Panels. I'll put this film straight. Let me bring it again. Not showing sure yet. Okay, so it has been in sleep mode, so I probably have to redo it. Just one second. Let me just do it again. Close it. Close it. I'll restart uh, Lightroom, and then it will behave itself. We used it uh, probably a good half an hour ago, and then probably for half an hour, it has gone to sleep. So what I need to do is to bring it back again by doing the whole process again. One second. Capture, capture. OK. And then if I click, I should be able to see the picture, hopefully. Is it showing me the camera? Yes, it is. Yep, yeah, yeah, back in business. And I will hide all these so many windows that it shows me. Otherwise, it gets confusing. So I'm going to close the windows. That one is closed. I think that's good enough. Now, if we just share the screen now, share the screen, go to Lightroom, share it. Right. OK, good. Yeah, I'm ready. Now, this, the picture that you're seeing is actually a picture. But because the flesh is not firing, that's why it's all dark. So let me turn the flesh on. Flesh is on now. Now, when I press the button, now when I press the button, I should be able to see something at least. There you go. There you go. So that's our first picture. I will talk about the settings and everything else in a minute, but this is our first picture. I'll click another one. One, two, three. Let's see what we get. It takes a few seconds. To, there you go. That's another one there. So this is what's happening. I keep clicking, and I keep getting more and more pictures. That's another one. So you can see the, the water surface, and then you've got column, then you've got umbrella, everything there. Now. 
Now, this is very basic. There's, there's nothing uh, spatial happening in there. I, I will show you a few more things uh, before I proceed. Back to my cell, I remove the screen share. Right, let me show you how it's done. So, first of all, I need to have, if I can have the wider frame, yeah, there you go. So, that's my camera, which is on a tripod, of course. Then I have this uh, little um, wine or drink uh, glass in there. And I fill it up right all the way to the top so I can get a nice splash. And then in the top one, I've got plain water there. The water, this is also plain water, there's no nothing added. Now, when we are using simple water, it's quite thin. So it creates a lot of drama and a lot of movement uh, in the splash. However, we also have an option to use another uh, little thing called Zentum gum. This is this is a powder, basically, Zentum gum. Uh, this is about 100 gram powder, which I paid, I think, three pound ninety nine including delivery from me there. And this will last me probably about 10 years, maybe more than that. So you only need a pinch of this thing to make water thick. This is a water thickening thing. It's more like you can get it from food store. I don't know what they use it for, for otherwise. I have no clue. So that is the powder we add to the water, plain water, mix it well, and then the water becomes a little thicker. The difference between thin or normal water and uh, thick water is that the splash is slightly different. With thin water, it goes everywhere. It goes literally everywhere. But with, when the water is thick, it makes Solid shape. The droplets or sparkles are not going to be there. So that is the difference. I will use that one as well in a minute, but let's take a few pictures with plain water. There are few different substances that we can use, starting with plain water, then we go to thick water, which is then from gum, and third one we can use milk. So milk is best, I would say, with the pictures that we get using milk. Are amazing so i will be using milk as well so let's start taking some pictures now i don't know if i have missed anything if i have missed anything please do let me know and i will definitely uh, cover them as well so starting to click some pictures i will add that to the stream so this is plain water you can see a lot of droplets running around all over the place and that's because the water is thin now if i click more let's see what we get next it takes a few seconds from uh, time to click to, yeah, that's that. Try another one. Uh, let me change something. Uh, we've got these settings already on this machine, uh, whatever settings they are. I can change them to something else, uh, unknowing. I mean, I have no clue. Am I doing the right thing or the wrong thing? But uh, I can change it, and that can cause uh, uh, that can that can create a complete disaster, or can create a better picture. I don't know. Let's try. Let me. Is it changing or not? Is it changing the picture, or is it showing the same picture throughout? It looks like. Keep going to sleep more, so I probably have to leave this uh, window, go back to panels, and leave it to strip on. Yeah. Okay, try again. Yes, yeah, so it's doing its job. All right, shrink it and go back to that. So these are some of the pictures there. You can have a look. Look at that. And I can keep clicking. Now I'm going to add a second light to this. I will add a second light to this and we'll see how it goes. That's, there's no umbrella in this one. Um, now let me add a second light to it. So this is my second light. This is my second light uh, where I have a wider screen. Oh, yeah, so I have actually a um, gel in the front, which is like a colored thing. And uh, I have a honeycomb grid in there, which is just 
to make sure that the light doesn't go everywhere. And I'm going to cover it and I put it here. Put it here, pointing to the background. I'm not pointing to the border, I'm pointing it to the background here. Yeah? And this is also firing at one upon 128 of its power. So now we've got two lights. One light firing from the left top there into the water. And the second light is pointing to the wall where the backdrop is. This is green, it'll be bluish color backdrop. So let's see what happens. One, two, three. Okay, add to the screen. Look at that. So that's how the water looks. I click again, see what happens. Yeah. It goes to sleep mode, so it takes a few seconds to come up. So you've got uh, Suraj watching, Mohit is there, Mohit, hello Mohit, oh Hina, hello Hina, how are you? And we've got uh, somebody from Brazil, thank you very much for joining in, thank you very much for joining in, so okay, let's click a few more pictures and then we will change the liquid to something else, so that's another one, should come up in a minute, there you go, so these, this is how these pictures look, you can see the difference between with the backlight and without the backlight. So at the moment we've got a backlight, which is uh, this one. So I'm going to turn it off. And just to show you the difference between having the backlight and not having the backlight. So now we don't have backlight, watch. Next picture should be without the backlight. There you go. So that's without the backlight. Now I turn it on. So every time we click, we're not changing anything whatsoever but the pictures are still coming out different because you can't control the water drops they do what they want to do and it comes up to any type there you go Ooh, that's a nice one lovely picture right now how do we change this thing how what do we do to make it different what i'm going to do now i'm going to change the liquid in the top uh, container and i will change it to a thicker liquid uh, that has got this xanthan gum already mixed in it. I will bring that thicker liquid, which is that one there, and I'm going to empty that into something. Let me get it empty now. So I will empty the top one into my container. And then I'm going to pour my other liquid. This is this is the one with xanthan gum in it. It's quite thick, quite thick liquid. So that's what it is, and I'm going to not pour all of it. I'll pour a little bit of it. So make sure I seal it because I've got lenses, I've got computer, I've got cameras, everything here. We don't want to mess up any electronics. Here. Right. Okay. Now you will see the difference in uh, the pictures that we were taking before to now. Let's click. The, the liquid that is coming from uh, the machine is thicker now, much thicker. Uh, let's share the screen. You can see, uh, this picture is very interesting. What you can see here is there's a column and then the second drop is not uh, not has not reached to the first one yet. So it's probably after a few tries, I'm sure I will get a splash one. Oh, okay, try again. Now, 
as soon as I've changed the liquid, uh, the sequence has changed. The, the pictures are not coming with an umbrella which they were coming before. Uh, when we had water in the top one, every picture had the umbrella. Now, when we have changed the liquid on or liquid on the top uh, container, uh, I haven't seen any picture with the umbrella yet. Yeah. So what do we do? Now we have a choice to make. We can either increase the size of the second drop, right? So let me try with that one. I will increase the size of the second drop, and that is done by button number three. So I will just turn it a little bit, tiny bit, and give it a go. So my second drop is going to be slightly larger. Does it help? We don't know. We have to wait and watch. Not yet, nothing happened. Still showing me the column. Um, I'm waiting for the second drop to hit the first drop or the column. If it hits, I will get a nice splash. Not yet. Okay, let me increase the second drop, or maybe I can reduce the gap between the first and the second drop, and that will make it quicker for my second drop to hit uh, the column. So button number two is actually for the gap, so I just turn it down a bit. I'm just doing a very tiny movement in these buttons, otherwise uh, it will change completely. Let's see. Not yet. Yet, in fact, I've gone the other way around. So what I could do, I could delay the camera shutter. I could say, all right, click after a few more seconds. So if I delay the camera shutter, that might do the trick. So gotta keep trying a few times, and then once we get the right settings we should be good to go because i've changed the liquid and that's making me change all the settings to get it right and there's no shortcut to it except just keep trying oh nearly there nearly there so i just probably give it a go a few more clicks and see if i get it right this is something which could take whole day to get some amazing shots. But yes, every shot is good, actually. There's, there's no rule as such that this is good or that is good. It's every shot is unique on its own. I'm waiting for the second drop to hit my first. There you go. There you go. So now the, the second drop has managed to hit uh, the actual uh, column. And if you, if you carefully watch it, because the the water coming from or the liquid coming from the container is thicker it's not creating those little fireworks sort of things it's making like a nice clean dish rather than those little spikes that were coming out from the umbrella Can you see the difference so this is because we are using a thicker liquid look at that yeah so that's our second thing to do now what I could possibly do is to change the color of the bottom uh, container and see instead of we had enough of red. So let me get another color, maybe green this time. And we are using food coloring. We are using simple food coloring. So I'm going to empty that red one. I'm going to carry it like that. And I'll put it to one side. Put that to one side. Now I'll put this one here. And then I'll use green color. I've already mixed the green food color in. Could we add a bit more water in there? Now, there's one more thing I wanted to show you is how to get the focus right, which I forgot to mention. 
how to get the focus right. Um, what I have done, I have got this little, if you can see, I've got this little thing here. And this have got, uh, show me the wider frame. So on that uh, container or wine glass, I have a little spike which has got a little sticker uh, from the back of my bank statement, if I show you closely. This is, this is what I have. I'll show you the bank statement. And the reason why I put it is because I can easily read to get the focus right. So I put it on top of the glass and then set the camera, read it, and when the focus is good, I leave it on manual focus, not on autofocus. You cannot get a shot with autofocus. So this is a trick that I use for getting the focus right. So I forgot to mention. Okay, now we are back in business. I have not moved the top container or the camera. So the drops are still going to be exactly at the same position. Only thing that I've changed is, is the bottom container. So we may have to adjust the position of the bottom container, but rest remains the same. Yeah, it's, it's not going to the right place. What did we get? Let's have a look. Yeah, okay. Look at that. Mm. I need to move it back a bit more. So I'm not moving my camera. I'm not moving my container. Um, I'm only moving the bottom bit. So I'm not changing the focus at all. Yeah. So can you see the difference between the umbrella that we were forming before to what we are doing now. If I take you back to one of the previous shots, quickly show you how it used to look. See that? So this is water, plain water there. This is plain water. Now we will show you another one. That's plain water. That's plain water. You can see little, little spark tools there. And what we are having now is this one. It's more like a dish rather than those sparkles and droplets going all over the place. So this is the difference between using a thick or a thinner liquid. Now, once we have used this liquid, maybe I can just click a few more and then we move on to another uh, liquid. Let's click another one, see what we get. So we're getting all these different shapes now, dish, it's, it's just perfect timing that the second drop hits the top of the column to create an umbrella or a dish, you can call it. And you can keep clicking whole day and admire every picture that you click and, and then edit them. See that? So you're getting some nice shots there. Now the next thing we would love to try, I would love to try is milk. Milk is, to me, milk is the best consistency that can actually create some amazing shots. Now, what we could do actually at this stage, I can let you watch uh, uh, a collection of some of the pictures um, to, to see how or what we can achieve. Although, I mean, you can see what we are doing now. But while I get the milk from the fridge, if you would like to watch a short video, that is uh, the slideshow video, so you can watch that video for time.
Right, so I've got milk with me now. What we will do, we'll empty the top container and we will pour some milk in there. I'm using a full fat milk, so it, it is slightly thicker than the other one. Let me empty that. Uh, I'd rather empty it in the same jar where I have this picture only. Like that for a second, okay. Then close it. I don't want to this happening. Put that away. Put it away. Put that away. And then add some milk. Fresh milk, there is nothing special in this milk, it's just normal full fat milk. I'm not going to add too much in that. Okay, so we have green liquid at the bottom and milk at the top. I have no clue how it is going to look like. I have never tried milk with green liquid. I've tried with the red one, but not with the green one. Let's give it a go. So here we go, one, two, three. So, well, it will take a few moments for actually milk to come through. It's only still throwing water. So I will click a few pictures. Yeah, now you can see some milk coming. Oh, look at that. You got something interesting there. You know, it's a proper umbrella. Try again. Right, so what do you think of that? Hello, Mohinder Bhai, kya hal chal hai? So nice to see you, sir. So that's another umbrella there. Thanks for joining, Mohinder Bhai. So we've got another one there. Now. Shall we mess it up? It's actually uh, behaving itself for some time. I, I'm surprised that no, normally we struggle to get these umbrellas. But today, almost every other picture is coming as an umbrella, which is a surprise to me. Um, it doesn't normally happen. So I'm going to mess it up by changing the settings. And when I change the settings, I'm not sure what we will end up getting. So let's increase the size of the first drop. So by changing the first dial, I'll change, I'll increase the size of the first drop, see what happens. Ooh, look at that. What do you think of that picture? So I increase the size of the first drop. So what happens with that, that the column height is more. And by the time the second drop hits, it, it just about right time for the second drop to break the drop of the first, um, uh, the, the column of the first drop. Try again. It's a matter of trial and error. There is no rule as such. It's like a flower. You've got green, uh, green stem and um, white flower. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to be a bit more creative and I will change the color of the gel that I'm using. If I go back to the, sorry, if I go back to the full size screen, the, the wider frame, and go to the wider frame and I show you. So what I had actually here, I had this yellow gel on my, on my flat. I had this yellow gel. That's why things were looking quite yellow. Now I'm going to be a bit more creative and I will change it to some other color. Uh, which color should I do? Maybe blue or not? If I do, well, I'm going to put, or maybe this one. This one is interesting color. I'm going to put this color. Slightly smaller. What a blue gel. I have no clue what sort of results to expect, but I will just, uh, I've just changed the color. 
for the sake of changing it. Let's see what we get. Let's see, let's see, add to this. Oops, sorry. This is the last one, not the new one. The new one is likely to, oh, look at that. Start screen picture. Right. Try again. Thank you, Suraj. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, this is another one. So now it's all gone bluish. Um, because I don't think I like that blue. Actually. I don't know if you like that blue or not. But I personally find it too dominating at the moment. Shall we try changing it to red and see what we get? Because it's just too dominating at the moment. It's nice. It's nice. It's not that bad. But of course, uh, worth changing the color. Oh, look at that. That's a nice one. It's a very nice picture. OK, let's change it to red and see what we get. So I'm moving the gel out. And I'll put the red one now. So you don't always have to change the, change the liquid. You can simply change the. Normally, I use Velcro to hold it there, but some of them they don't have the Velcro. Okay, let's try again. Let's see what happens with the red color. Oops, being done. Stream. That was blue. This is red. Oh, that's nice. That's fairly nice. That's fairly good. Now, I think we should go a little closer. No, we don't need to. Do you think it's too red or is it okay? What do you think? Tell me. So red is okay as well. Red is probably too red. The too red, what other color we can put in? Should we try a red on red background? Oh, look at that. I don't know what it's called. It's an umbrella upside down. So we have we have two more backgrounds I have. I have the green and red. Somebody tell me which color should I go for. I think I should go for red on red. What do you think? If you do red on red, either it will look very good or it might look hopeless. So we've got nothing to lose. You can try the red on red. Let's have a look. So I'm putting this red one there. What? So now I have a red backdrop. Red uh, milk is going to look red, but the water at the bottom is okay. Uh, okay, red looks fine, but the I think the background is messing it. All right. Um, okay. Okay. Let's let's give it a go. I mean, we've got nothing to lose. I can uh, possibly show you one more thing in a minute. Add to that. This is the last one. I'm waiting for the new one to come up. No, that is not, that's too strong. That's too strong. That's too strong. So red is not really working. Red backdrop is not working. It's actually merging. The actual foreground is, is merging into the background. All right, okay. Get the background. Okay, good. Should I try green? See what we get. Let me try green and see what happens. Mm. So we've got green coming up. Okay, give it a go. Might look good, might look horrible. I don't know. It's a matter of experimenting. 
white background. Yeah, we can try white background. Yes, mind the way. That looks reasonable. We'll try white background, mind the way, in a minute. I will get rid of all of them, and then we have the white board at the back. So that probably will work. Let me just click a few with this first, and then we switch to white and see how it looks. It might look good, actually. You are spot on. Just to give a nice contrast, white might look good. Ooh, look at that. That's not bad, actually. That's not bad. The red is looking quite... Ooh, 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 ooh. They're all coming out quite good. Honestly speaking, I, I'm, I'm lucky, I would say. Normally, uh, we have to struggle for good 10, 20 minutes to get this umbrella thing. And imagine if we just go with Lightroom and just adjust the shadows and contrast and sharpness, this picture could look quite stunning. I'm going to post quite a few pictures from it in the comment section just for people to have a look on what we have achieved during the show. Should keep clicking so we get more and more pictures. No. Literally, you hardly see two same pictures. You hardly see two same pictures. They all come out in a different way. Uh, the, the cup is not in the center. If I can move it that way. And let me just try and remove the front red color so we can have the white milk, the white as such, rather than having the red. So now we will see milk as pure white milk. There you go. Let's see what we get. That's pure white milk, green, green liquid, and green background. Not bad, actually. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Now we could possibly change the angle of the camera. We can go further higher looking down. Let me try that. Ideally, we avoid messing it up, but I would love to. Okay, I'll raise it up. There. And then looking down. I probably have to get the focus right again because I have changed the location or the distance. From camera, from lens to the water drop. I just need to get the focus right. Okay. Now, let's have a look. So the angle is slightly changed now. It's literally looking down. I look, oh, look at that. So that's how the angle is now. Oops, nothing there. Try again. So that looks, that's not bad actually. Okay. Now what else we can do? Okay. Okay. So background, I want to do something with the background as uh, we have another message saying degrade background. So let's, uh, uh, I have got a gel actually for the background, which is the red gel at the moment. I would love to change it to something else. What have we got? We've got yellow, we've got blue. Blue will make it purple. So if I put blue gel in there, and see what we get. What else I will do in a minute? I will use only backlight. Okay, now we've got a blue gel with a green backdrop. God knows what will happen, but let's have a look. Okay, here we go. Next picture. Come on, come on, come on. Didn't make much difference. These gels are very weak at least, they're not doing much. Okay. 
Okay, let's go for, as Mahindra Bhai said, we want to use, try white backdrop to see what happens. I'm going to get rid of all of that. One by one. That. Get rid of that. Let's see what we get. I don't think we are getting a white backdrop because the camera is pointing much higher. Let's have a look. We have to put something there. Yeah. No good. I need to have something in the background to actually. something in the background now. I'll probably have to change the color of the light to get the uh, milk uh, seen on the white background. Yeah, and it's reflecting. That's the problem with the white light, white background. Okay, never mind. Let's use this red again. Not really, there's not much happening. Um, can you say you're saying you um, uh, you're saying you want to use the grade background? What does that mean? Can you explain that to me a bit more? Yes, uh, I have just put red gel on the flesh. Uh, both actually uh, speed lights have got a, a, one has got a red gel and one has, one has got a blue gel at the moment. So red being too strong. Right. Okay. Okay, I think I should go back to my original blue backdrop to create a bit of contrast. Let's see what we get now. And then we will experiment with one final thing. Yes, uh, main light is spilling on the background. You're right. I need to use probably a, a grid. I probably need to use a grid on that. So this is this is not bad actually. This is not bad. Uh, this is not bad. Try a few quickly, and then I'll show you something very interesting in a minute. It's not bad, actually. It's like pointed down a bit. Hmm. Try again. Point it down a bit further. See what we get. Further down. There. Let's see. Um, um, I can do it. Only I've got this uh, uh, honeycomb grid that I can use. Only this I have is that it will literally. 
then call the date, maybe ten, maybe ten, I can see. Okay. Now there's no spillage, but center of gravity is slightly funny. Right, let's see if we can get away. Okay, okay, I need to move back a bit because this is seen in the picture. I've increased the ISO because we are blocking some of the light with the gel. We are blocking some light with the honeycomb grid. So I, instead of actually, I still want to use the lowest power so, so that I can freeze the picture. But what I have done here, I have increased the ISO to probably about 500. Let's see what we get. So I can get some details out. Let's see, let's see. Red gel, is it doing anything? The answer is no. Get rid of red gel. Normal light, let's see. It probably would be overexposed. I know. Oh, this is fine. Yeah. See how much difference it makes to have this little piece of plastic in the sun. It's overexposed now. Okay. So we need to have. ISO, I'll bring it down to so about 200 and dry again. Okay, now I want to do one final thing, which is I will turn off the front light completely and we'll have the backlight only. See how dramatic it would become. So turn off the front light completely and I've only got the backlight lighting up the backdrop but there is a, a light bouncing back from the backdrop. Let's see what we get. Let's see. There you go. And what I could possibly do is to have some sort of reflector in the front to get some. Okay, okay. let's try one more. I'll point the light to the drop from behind. There you go. I have no clue what I'm going to get, but I'll give it a go. There you go. So that's backlighting. There's no front light whatsoever. So you can see that the, the options are unlimited. I could be here literally whole day doing lighting, changing lighting, changing gels, changing colors, changing this, changing the liquid, and keep clicking forever. So choices are unlimited, literally unlimited. And uh, we can create some stunning images just by messing around a bit. Now, there's one more thing I would like to uh, remind again. I said earlier that this is actually working on. Uh, let me shrink it for a minute. Uh, this is actually the picture is being captured with the light, not the shutter speed. So, shutter speed could be anything which is the sync speed of your camera. The picture is being captured by the light that is being fired. And uh, when I say that, I will just prove it to you how it's working. So if I turn off all the light, all the flashlights, I mean, if I turn off both of them, what do you expect? So I've turned this one off. Yeah, this is off now. And the front one is already off. And if I click a picture now, 
What do you expect? There's no flash fire. I'll do one more just to give you an eye just at the frame. What is your expectation this time? Nothing. Literally nothing. Literally nothing. I keep clicking. There's no picture whatsoever. And why is that? Because the light, I'm shooting on f-stop 9. I'm shooting at f-stop 9. And at f-stop 9, the light in the room is not enough to give me a picture. Right? So my shutter speed could be anything, literally. My shutter speed, my shutter speed could be um, 1 upon 2 50th of a second. It will not make any difference whatsoever. Let me turn this light on again and create some more drama. Should come up nice with you. There you go. What if we add the front light as well? I have no clue what will happen, but let's give it a go. <clears throat> so we've got both lights on now. No problem, Surat. I'm finishing as well shortly. We have created enough for today. My plan was to go live for about an hour, but it's so interesting that uh, I didn't want to finish it halfway through. So thank you very much for joining in. So that's what we have. I think the front light is killing the shot. I'll turn it off for time being. We just need the backlight. So we just shoot a few on the backlight, and I might as well change the color of the backlight just to get some variation. I put a red gel on the backlight and see what we can. I have no clue what we are going to get, but let's see. Okay, we can pump up the ISO, 500 ISO. I don't want to increase the intensity of the light, I just want to play with ISO. This red is too strong. We need something like a pump. Maybe a yellow? Maybe a yellow, maybe a yellow. Right. Oops, light in. So let me bring light room back in here. So when I put yellow, this is what we are getting. I just click one or two more and then we are done. Can you see them? Yes. Um, my way, France, I'm using uh, the, the lowest amount of light at the moment, unless I uh, keep the distance, I can push, pull it back a bit more, that will be actually half the distance, uh, double the power, so if I just move it back, that will do exactly what you're saying, let's see, and turn it on, sorry, so I've turned it on, I moved it back, so we've got both lights now, front as well as back. The distance of the front light has been changed. That's the front light. I think as soon as we add the front light, the drama disappears. 
Um, if I go back to the previous picture, there's plenty of drama in that one. We compare this, this, with this. This one has got front light on. Maybe, I don't know, they, they, it's just a matter of creating variations, actually, and then to keep clicking. What if, if I add red color to the milk? If I just add a little bit of food color, the red, to the milk, and just mix it. The milk is red now. Think, Father. It will take a few moments for it to come through. Keep looking. Not right enough. There's plenty of red. Mix it. Okay, try it. Thanks, Cottage. Thanks for joining in. So it's not actually showing red enough. Never mind. So I think uh, we had a long session with interesting pictures. If I quickly go back to my uh, Lightroom session, just to show you some of the pictures, how they were looking. They're not bad, actually. They're not bad. They're not bad pictures. We've got plenty of pictures to play with. Uh, in a one-hour session, while I was cleaning as well, I managed to bring, uh, capture probably about 100 pictures, 244 pictures we have captured. And out of these 244, I'm sure we can have at least 10 uh, decent pictures from there. And uh, so hope you enjoyed. Oops. Right. So thank you very much for joining in. So that was um, how we do water drop. So is not just water, it's a milk, it's got other chemicals as well you can use. So hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please uh, like my Facebook page or YouTube channel wherever you're watching. So you can watch the next uh, session, whatever we do. I'm planning a few very interesting sessions very soon. So if you wish to join in in these sessions, I mean, I have never seen anybody doing live water drop photography. They have done a video on YouTube. You will find plenty of videos on water drop photography, but nobody has done a live video. And the reason why people don't do it because uh, these water drops, they have a mind of their own and they don't really behave the way you want them to behave. It was fun. Um, I think I managed to get away because I was a bit concerned whether this will work or not, but it worked. So thank you very much for uh, your patience and joining in. Do join us next time. I have no clue at the moment which one would be the next one, but something interesting uh, I'm planning, and I will get back to you as soon as I have planned and I'll announce it. So thank you very much for joining me. Have a very good evening. Thank you. <laughs>